Doctor Who, The Web of Doom by Daniel Berry and Christopher Cribb Episode 2 Paralyzed with fear, John and Gillian do nothing except watch in horror as to see the fate of Barclay as his mind gets probed by the great intelligence. Ah! Ah. Barclay, now in a stupefied state, gets back up, his skin pale and white, his mannerisms zombified, his facial expressions plain. He was now under the impression of the great intelligence. He turns back to see the two Yassi behind him. He then points to two devices in the corner. Pick up the generator loops. The two Yassi pick up one device each and follow him down the tunnel. Now what do we do? We tell the Doctor, come on. Further down the tunnel, Captain Cross, Corporal, Windsor and Roland all run into their own same problem. I told you I had something, didn't I, Cross? Indeed you did, lad. The soldiers get a glimpse of a reflective light further down the tunnel in the distance. See that? Look! Wandering Yeti comes out of the tunnel. Arm yourselves, lads! <coughs> the soldiers arm themselves with weapons. Now, hold on. Captain Cross Lee holds out his right arm. Now, lads, no. Don't do anything until I give the signal. The Yeti, showing no threat, drops the device. It then turns round and came back the way it came. Puzzled by what just happened, Captain Cross looks at the device. Any idea what that is, Cross? No, lad, I don't. Don't really want to stop to find out. Hey, have you still got that camera of yours? Oh, I think so, I think so, Cross. Give it here, will you? Get a photograph of it to show back to the doctor. Yeah, let's do a trick. Now come on, let's get out of here before any more of those Yeti show up. Back at HQ, the Doctor and Robin are examining the circuitry. Anything? No, not yet. There's a peculiar logic in these circuits, but I haven't quite managed to work it out yet. At that moment, Robin's daughter Lucy comes in with some coffee. Ah, lovely coffee. Thank you, Lucy. I think we could both do with a cup. Any progress? No, nothing. Not even the doctor can figure out. Well, not yet, but we will eventually. Lucy, not stopping to ask questions, just leaves the room. Ah, right. Better get to it. Robin picks up his magnet as a boredom and starts playing with it. This is no time to be playing with your magnet, Robin. Sorry, just got bored. Hey. There just might be something. I've got a theory about something. Can you pass me that circuit? Yes, yeah, certainly. The doctor hands it to him. Okay. This may or may not work, but it's worth giving it a shot. Robin holds the circuit and the, mag and the little magnet together. As he bonds them close together, there is a little spark of electricity and the two repel from each other. <laughs> you see that? It only happened for just a minute, but I was certain I saw a little spark of electricity. Meaning, these circuits were created to withdraw any form of electricity. It's a sort of repelling system. Meaning, yes. If you were to 
multiply these by, say, a thousand, you'd have a very powerful force field. Oh, I see. How interesting. But what could they be used for? Why would the intelligence want a huge force shield? Beats me. But one thing for sure, it's being used somewhere in these tunnels. Due to miscalculation, John and Gillian, looking back to HQ, get lost in the tunnel. Which way was it we came? Oh, I'd say about left. Or was it right? Well, there's no need. Well, we've got to make up our minds straight away. Well, we... Well, well, what do you plan to do? Get back to HQ, of course. Let the doctor know what we saw. But will he believe us? I mean, they're soldiers. Don't worry, Gillian. Just stop getting so worked up about it. I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm just so traumatised about what we saw. Poor Barkley. He was trying to protect us. Yeah, well, Barkley's not Barkley anymore. His brain's been taken over by the intelligence. You saw it. We saw... I saw it. No, the sooner the Doctor and Captain Cross know that the Barclay's no longer on our side, the better. And which way was it we came? Was it right? Or was it left? I think it was right, wasn't it? Are you sure? I have a hunch. I just hope I'm right. Not knowing what way to turn, and having to come up with the decision very quickly, John and Gillian decide to turn right into the tunnel. They then turn into a rather peculiar direction, which takes them down to Covent Garden. Covent Garden. Oh look, there's a map. John examines the map thoroughly. Okay, so if HQ's there, and we're here... Oh well that's no good, we're just down, we're just further down the mountain, we'll have to take a Pelican Way. But... Hold on, I think... Yes. If we go back the way we came and turn left, then we can reach a shortcut. Well, it wouldn't get us to where we want to be, but at least it's a start. Come on, let's go back the way we came. Unknown to them, John and Gillian can't go back the way they came, as there is a yeti standing in their way. Keep calm, Gillian. Everything's going to be all right. The Yessi just stands there, not doing anything. It's holding another one of those force shield devices. Slowly and calmly, the Yeti drops the device onto the floor. The Yeti then turns and walks off. John gets a closer look to examine the machine. Hey. This is the same device that we saw earlier. I wonder what it does. John. John looks up to reveal there is a wall in the in the way of the tunnel entrance. Oh no! How are we going to get back now? Meanwhile, down in Warren Street Tunnel, Captain Cross, Corporal Windsor, and Roland all run into the same problem. Sir, look, it's another one of those devices. Yeah, they're all over the place. What could they be used for? Get out, lad. No. No, it's all right. Let's go back the way we came. We just came through this way. This wall. It wasn't there. Exploring matters further, the Doctor and Robin further examine the circuit with the magnesium. Oh yes, just exactly what I suspected. What? Robin looks up at his watch. Doctor, I don't think the others have come back yet. It's crucial timing. Don't worry about them. I'm sure they'll be able to sort themselves out. Yes, but I'm just saying, what if the intelligence is deliberately trying to trap them? I don't see how that could be possible. Do you not? Well, I think it's a very likely possibility. It's trying to corner us off. Why else would create the force shield? 
And why would it delay your friends getting back to the TARDIS? Well, now you may have something. <laughs> what are you chuckling about? Sorry, Doctor, I just didn't see you as being a bit of a ditherer. A ditherer? Well, you were very complacent to object to the possibility that the intelligence could be trapping the soldiers and your two friends. Well, I was just thinking maybe just went into the section us off a bit. But no, no, you were very complacent in, a, in deciding to just object that as a possibility. I didn't see it as the most likely of possibilities. But you do have a point. I don't deny that. Uh, it's just a pain not knowing. I mean, we're scientists. We're meant to know these sorts of things. I wonder... What? If we could create such a device that would disarm these shield matter and things, we might be able to free our friends. Yes. Yes, there is a possibility. It's worth a try. Let's get on to it. That magnet, have you still got it? Robin takes the magnet out of his pocket. Here. Right then. With this magnet and this circuit, you might be able to discharge the machines. Just hope we're right. The Doctor holds the two objects together and gets the same result Robin gets. Pfft. Yes. Yes. Aha. Got an idea. Now come on. Where are we going? Doctor. Lucy, stay here. Where are you going? Robin did not wait to give his daughter an answer as he and the Doctor dash off. Lucy is left alone. She then sits down in the laboratory looking over her father's notes. It is then that Lucy hears a tumbling sound. <laughs> Hello? Who's there? <laughs> Paralyzed with fear, Louis, Lucy just stands. The Yeti knocks her to the ground and carries her off by her leg. Two of the Yeti stay to trash the office. It is then Barclay arrives to investigate the situation. Stop! There is no need for this destruction. You have done all the damage necessary. Go. Go. You have duties to perform. The two Yeti vacate from the premises. The controlled Barclay smiles and then closes the door behind him. Though stuck in the tunnel, Corporal tries to connect to HQ. Squad 1 to HQ. Squad 1 to HQ. Squad 1 to HQ. Squad 1 to HQ. Come in, please. It's no good, Captain. Try it again. Squad 1 to HQ. Come in, please. Suddenly the radio dies. Great, now the battery's dead. I don't suppose you've got a hammer so we can knock our way out of this. The more we move, the quicker we use up the air. We'll wait. It's our only chance. Back in their tunnel, John examines the wall. John, what are you trying to do? I'm just wondering to see if there's any hollow ground in this thing. Usually some walls tend to have a hollow shell or something. Something you can use to break through. No, nothing. I just can't help but feel that we're doing anything. We're not doing anything. Well, we can't. We're trapped. Yeah. That's just the last thing of my worries. The last thing I want to be is trapped. Not being able to do anything. Yes, you can't help yourself. Yes, I can. But just 
turned left, we would have been on our way back to HQ. Such an idiot. No, you're not. Don't doubt yourself now. Do you think... Do you think the Doctor knows where we are? Well, how could he? Sorry. I suppose he could have. Well, I just don't know. Hey, John. What's all this slime? Slime? What are you talking about? Well, there's just some slime leaking in the corner of the room. Hey, look, it's starting to grow. Gillian wasn't wrong. A slime substance was forming in the tunnel, growing bigger and bigger and bigger. It, bubble, it bubbles and froths even further as it escalates to grow in some sort of creature. We've got to get out of here! John and Gillian cannot exit as they are blocked by the wall. The slime creature evolves. We're going to be engulfed! <laughs>